using descriptive sheet tab names guides you to the contents of that sheet. But if you have hundreds of sheets, most of them will be covered by the horizontal scroll bar. Using short or abbreviated names doesn't even help. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I show you a clever method to create interactive sheet tab names. Along the way, I will share amazing tips and tricks. Let's see the finished project. I used this list for creating my project. I have an index column, a country column, and I have a code for each country, and then I have the capital and the population. Let's see the finished project. Since I have 230 countries, I created a separate worksheet for each country and I named the sheet following the abbreviation of that country. On the top left side of each sheet, I have the country, the capital, and the population. I extracted all that by using functions. But if you look at the worksheet name, it might be confusing to read the abbreviation. And here is the beautiful functionality. When I click on any sheet, I will read the name of the country. But if I click on another sheet, then the abbreviation comes back. I'm going to click on this sheet and I can see the full name of the country. Let's go to another country. What if I click on CAN? That stands for Canada. If I click away, then I'm back to the abbreviation. I'm going to create this project from scratch. So let's dive in. Here is my start file. I have an index column, a code column, a country, a capital, and a population. I want to select the entire list, and I use the abbreviation control star or asterisk, and then I want to name each column by following the top row, the column header, that is create names from selection. I use the shortcut control shift F3 to open the dialog box. In the Create Names from Selection dialog box, top row is checked. That's all what I want. I hit OK and I would have named the columns. To check, I click on the down arrow of the name box. If I select Capital, then Excel recognizes this entire column by its name. Now I want to create a pivot table. I select any cell in the list. I go to the Insert tab of the ribbon. I click on Pivot Table. The pivot table wizard opens. I want to create my pivot table in the existing worksheet. I select existing and I select the destination cell and then I hit OK. The pivot table field list appears on the right side. All what I need to do is to drag the code to the filters drop area. And I finish creating the pivot table that I want. Now on the pivot table analyze tab and to the far left, there is an options command. To the right side of the options command, there is a down pointing arrow. If I click on the down pointing arrow and I select show report filter pages, a dialog box opens. The moment I hit OK, all the magic will happen. A separate worksheet will be created and named following the code of each country. Two hundred and thirty different sheets created and named following the code of each country. I would like to create some labels in row number one and extract the country, the capital and the population by using functions. I start by deleting the filter of the pivot table, but in order to do that in one single step in all the sheets, I need to group the sheets. The leftmost is selected, then I press Ctrl and click on the right pointing arrow. To reveal the rightmost, data that's the source data, I press shift and click on the last country. Now all the sheets are grouped. I'm going to remove the pivot table filter. On the home tab, I click on the down arrow for the clear command and I select clear all. I'm going to type some labels. In A1, I type country. In B1, I type capital. In C1, I type population. I adjust the column width for the three columns. I want them wider and I will be applying some formatting. Now I want to create a function that extracts the information related to each worksheet. Sheets have a tab name and they have a code name and they have an index number counting from left to right. This index number matches the index column in the source data. 
and I'm going to use it in extracting the country, the capital, and the population. I'll be creating an XLOOKUP function to do that. Equal XLOOKUP, and then I hit tab. What are you looking at? I'm looking at the sheet number. Then I type sheet, I hit tab, I close the bracket, and then I type comma. That was my lookup value. What's your lookup array? I'm looking at this index number in the index column. Then I type index. I select it from the intelligence list. That's a named range. I type a comma and then I want the column corresponding to the header. Then I use an indirect function and I want the indirect of this header. I close the bracket for the indirect. I close the bracket for the XLOOKUP function and then I hit enter and I was able to extract the country name. Now I can copy to the right and I have the capital and the population for each one of the countries. And now I'll be ungrouping the sheets by right clicking and select ungroup. And I want to create an extremely simple code that is triggered by selecting a sheet tab and is triggered by deselecting a sheet tab. That's called a workbook event. I'm going to switch to the Visual Basic Editor and I'll put the code in the description below this video. I hit Alt F11 to switch to the Visual Basic Editor. I go down to the end of list and I double click on this workbook. I'll be creating a code for this workbook. Then from the left drop list, I select workbook. It creates a sub procedure. That's not the one I want. The workbook open. I'm going to delete it. But from the right drop list, I'll be selecting the first event, which is sheet.activate. I can delete the previous one. And between the private sub and the end sub, I'll be creating my code. I declare two variables, tab name and new name. And then I give a value to each variable. The tab name will be grabbing the worksheet name, which is the abbreviation. And the new name will be using an index and match function. We can use these functions in VBA. The match function will be looking at the tab name in the code name column and I'm using the defined name code and it will return the position to the index function that will return the corresponding country name from the country column. So when I select a worksheet, this is what will happen. Automatically, the country name will be extracted and the tab name will acquire the name of the country. The other code, when I deselect the sheet, is almost identical. I just reverse the two named column of the index and match. Then I'm going to create the private sub workbook sheet deactivate. I click on the down arrow from the right drop list and I select the second event sheet deactivate. I can copy and paste the same code and make simple variations. For the tab name, I'm going to use this abbreviation by val sh as object, then I type sh, and I want to reverse country and code, so here this will be code, and this will be country. And I'm done. Let's go back to Excel. If I click on this sheet, I see the country name. Let's select another sheet. I click on USA, that's the abbreviation. When I click, I see United States. That's beautiful. Let's go to a distant worksheet. I right click and I want to move up to a totally distant worksheet. So I selected another worksheet and I can see the country name and all the information related to this country. EGY, that's my beautiful home country, Egypt. When I click on it, I can read Egypt. And if I navigate further to the right, I can read the abbreviation CAN which corresponds to the beautiful country where I'm living, Canada, and I see all the information related to Canada. And we were able to create a nice project by combining the functionality of named ranges, pivot tables, the XLOOKUP function, and a simple code that we created in VBA. I'm going to put the code in the description below the video. Depending upon the names of your columns, you can modify that code and use it directly.
If you found value in this tutorial, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel to be notified when new tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.